Okay, so this is video two of the Cambodia series. There are lots of uh, beautiful, happy, um, just wonderful scenes in Cambodia that you will see in the following videos. This video is not one of them. This video continues with some of the background that I told you about in the last one uh, about the occupation by the Khmer Rouge from 1975 to 1979. The first place we went the morning after we arrived in Phnom Penh was to the Tuol Slang Genocide Museum which uh, is, is essentially, it was a high school that the Khmer Rouge converted into a prison and torture and interrogation center for all the quote-unquote enemies of the revolution. And um, uh, I'll, I put, I favorited two videos that give some background to the Khmer Rouge uh, time, those four years. If I'll put them, I'll link them in the sidebar. So if you want, to, want some more um, background take a look at those videos but uh, just some of the stories that I that stuck out in my head while I was there basically it's the same story of, of any uh, the you know wacko wacko regime that gets into power that happens from time to time I because of my my family way back came from Russia during the communist uh, takeover in the communist revolution so many of the stories that you hear in Cambodia sound like stories from from the Stalinist era era, it's just a man who was insanely paranoid and thinking everyone was out to get him or subvert him, and because he had absolute power, he was able to uh, just have them murdered. In, in the case of Russia, it was Stalin. In the case of Cambodia, it was a guy named Pol Pot, and so um, Pol Pot was the supreme leader, and he was paranoid, constantly paranoid. So not only the enemies, his, his main enemies, which were the Cambodian people generally, who he put into massive work camps for four years, even any members of his staff or any members of the Khmer Rouge itself who he distrusted uh, would be sent to be tortured and killed. And a lot of the people, some books I read said most of the people who ended up in this particular genocide or this particular uh, prison were members of the Khmer Rouge regime who fell out of favor with Pol Pot. So there's even one story actually at the end of Pol Pot's reign, uh, uh, reign that I think illustrates just the kind of insanity that you're operating with in dealing with a guy like him. Uh, and how he was so insane that I, I, I kind of got the impression that his regime couldn't have lasted much longer than four years because, well this is the example, uh, he became distrustful of his soldiers, of his commanders on his on the eastern border, on the eastern part of Cambodia, who were protecting against the Vietnamese. Because at the time, the uh, Russians were supporting the Vietnamese communists, and the Chinese were supporting the Cambodian communists, the Khmer Rouge. So you had kind of, uh, within the context of the Cold War, uh, with U.S. and communism, also the communists were uh, at odds with each other. And so Pol Pot, distrusting the, his Eastern Guard, had 100,000 of his soldiers there uh, murdered, which essentially paved the way for the reinvasion, uh, basically for the Vietnamese to take over Cambodia and move into Phnom Penh and end the Khmer Rouge regime. So his insanity wrote, wasn't even strategic, it was just ex insane paranoia, but that's... Uh, the characteristics of what this regime was all about and what this country's been through. So anyway, um, you'll see uh, one old man who's an actual survivor of this uh, prison, he, and he's been on CNN on a number of news shows because there were not very many survivors, and you'll see him in this uh, video as well. So, check it out.